Hello and welcome to another edition of Surviving Scientology Radio with your host, Jeffrey Augustine. Today we have on the show former Sea Org member, Maureen Bolstap. Maureen, welcome. Hi, Jeffrey. Nice to be on the show. Thanks. Thanks for coming on. Today we wanted to talk about the Church of Scientology's notorious purification rundown. Maureen, tell us about the first time you did the purification rundown. Okay, well, uh, my first purification rundown, um, I actually kind of liked it. I was 18. I was, um, this is 1984, and um, I arrived at the um, the Gold Base out in Hemet, and I was a new Sea Org member there. Um, I'd only been in the Sea Org for about um, a year or two when I, when I got my uh, purification rundown. It was only about a week that I was on it, and it involved gobs and gobs of vitamins and... Um, sitting in a sauna for five hours a day and uh, I kind of breezed through it. Um, I had a few things come up and nothing really major and um, I, I liked it. I, I thought it was a healthy program but I was uh, I was 18 and I was really really healthy. I was an athlete. I mean I could literally run 12 miles a day if I wanted to. I was so healthy. So the, the program really was a real breeze for me to do. And it was also in a lighthearted spirit that I did it. I really think I needed it. It was just sort of, I was just doing it because it was on the gray chart, right? So now I want to talk about the second time I did the purification rundown. Bit of a different story. I was um, 29 years old. Uh, it was 1995 and it was in June. And I had some health problems. And so the, the program itself was very stressful on me and I, I actually lost uh, 20 pounds of muscle mass on the program and um, my heart's a muscle and after that after that it was like a it was like an injury to me I began having heart problems my at rest heart rate um, increased and and stayed increased and I I spent years and years having to build all that muscle back up again and um, I was really really uh i mean it it was an injury to me it was very traumatic to me to have that happen on the purification rundown and so later later on when i when i got up enough guts to do so i wrote a really long and detailed letter to the senior cs int office and to dr gene dank when he was still alive in uh around 2002 i believe is when i wrote this love letter and I, and I explained to Dr. Dink what had happened on the program and that, you know, and I wrote in this letter um, that the, pur the purification rundown needed some safety precautions um, because the purification I see mistook uh, symptoms of over, over stressing and overtraining as something that I needed to stay in the sauna to sweat out. And one of those symptoms was that I smelled profusely like ammonia. And ammonia, when someone smells like ammonia, and I was told this by a professional personal trainer who are trained to, to, to look for signs of overtraining. What it is is when you, when you start smelling like ammonia, it means your body is, 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 dige is metabolizing uh, protein. It's dipped into its protein stores. Uh, you, you either need to you know, eat more carbs or, or um, you need to cut back on your, your exercise or something. But smelling like ammonia is not something that you want to continue to do. You know, what can also happen is you can go, your body can get overstressed. You could go into the fight or flight mode and you can start metabolizing your own muscle mass. Your body's no longer using food stores or carbs or anything that you ate for dinner. It's, it's, it's actually using your own muscle mass as a source of energy and, it, and, and you will smell profusely like ammonia when you do that. And, and bodybuilders and weightlifters and people doing physical therapy programs need to, are aware of this because it defeats the purpose of the programs. You know, if you're, if you're trying to build your muscles after an accident, uh, you want to build the muscles. You don't want to overstrain yourself and then metabolize and eat away your own muscles. Phenomena of smelling like ammonia is well known. You can Google it, read about it. Now, how, that second Purif in 1995, how long were you on it? How did it start? Um, I was um, I was on it for over a month, and um, it started. It was a solution to a problem. I was I was chronically uh, fatigued. Um, I was 
getting sick every week. I was having a lot of health problems. And um, one of the doctors I was seeing had recommended that I perhaps needed to do the purification rundown again because, you know, it had been a while since my first one and I had been exposed to a lot of different, you know, construction chemicals for um, when doing renovations at the gold base or um, even sitting in front of all my video screens for, uh, you know, days on end without sleep and there's a certain amount of radiation you know that i might have been exposed to or there was there's various different reasons why it was thought and the medical liaison officer and my cs at the time thought it might be a good idea for me to do my purification rundown again and um i wanted to do it because i i liked the first one and i thought yeah it'll if it will if it will um help me with this chronic fatigue um i wanted to do it but i had had at the time, you know, I actually had some undiagnosed health problems that are not picked up in a regular health exam that are particularly important to do, uh, entering into a, a strenuous program like this. And one of those undiagnosed problems was that I did have some intestinal parasites. I had picked up from a, I guess I picked them up when I was in Venezuela or something years before, but I had some intestinal parasites and that puts some strain on the system. I had some damaged discs in my spine, so I was in chronic pain. That put some strain on the system. That was also undiagnosed. And I had actually have a, a, a rare heart disorder, which is not, um, you know, it's not a bad one. It's not fatal or anything like that. It's just something that I need to be aware of and watch for. And that's um, called Wolf Parkinson's white heart disorder. And it's where, if I if my electrolytes go low or I get stressed, my heart can go into a tachycardia because I have another circuit between the. This is what, how the doctor explained it to me. I have, uh, you know, the left and right ventricles have a circuit between them that keep them in sync, and I have another shorter circuit that can that sometimes gets used. So that will cause my heart to beat out of sync and race, and this happened while I was on the pure. If I was having my second pure, if I was having all these chest pains pains in my arm and I was having these my heart was racing and the medical liaison officer at gold did actually take me to a heart specialist out in Hemet and he did an EKG and he said you have Wolf Parkinson's white and he, he wanted me to give me some drugs to numb my heart to get it to slow down and sync up but um, the medical liaison officer the nurse at the time I think it was um, Jocelyn, she's pretty smart, actually. She said, well, she's been doing this sauna program and maybe she, maybe her electrolytes are low. You know, maybe she's having some absorption problems, even though I'm eating gobs and gobs of, you know, vitamins uh, because of possibly, you know, she thought maybe I might have an, an absorption problem. Uh, maybe if I got magnesium uh, and vitamin shots, uh, that would help. And so the, the heart specialist said well that would be interesting to see if this was because of electrolyte problem and so um i got magnesium shots for the rest of the time i was in the purif and that seemed to make that seemed to correct my ekg however um it didn't actually um change the fact that uh, my heart was was strained on the program and and my heart rate just went up and stayed up higher than it was from before I went on the program. In other words, by the time I realized I was having a problem and I went to the heart specialist, I had already caused some damage and weakened my heart. So trying to finish the program with a heart problem, it was really hard to do. I, there was a point where, I mean, I was still sweating ammonia. I was still having reactions to the niacin. And I was thinking in my head, I'm sitting in that sauna going, these guys are trying to, you know, kill me. And, uh, you know, I was like, no, no, I'm paranoid. I'm just, you know, I'm just going to go tell the purify see that I'm overrun, <laughs> you know, and I'm done because I'm not going to sit here and keep sweating like this. This is, I was looking at my daily reports and I'm going, I lost 20 pounds of muscle mass. And I don't know. I mean, that was difficult for me to build in the first place. Well, sure. <laughs> and, you know, th this is one of the problems of the church's Scientology. It, it has medically unqualified people called medical liaison officers who are not doctors or nurses do not have professional medical training of any kind no degrees and the church of scientology cannot spot underlying medical conditions like your heart condition right. for our listeners who are not familiar with the purification rundown it's a program designed by Rollin hubbard about 1978 
Prior to that, L. Ron Hubbard had an idea that if you put on a rubber suit and run around, you would sweat. And this was called the sweat program. And the idea was you were sweating out toxins or drug residues. The reason L. Ron Hubbard created that, a lot of people were coming into Scientology orgs to get auditing, but he was saying they had the effects of drugs. He believed that drugs were stored in the fat and tissues of the body, not just drugs, but toxins, household cleaners, cough syrup, whatever. So the purification rundown became formalized as a program go into the into a sauna for five or six hours a day, is it? Yes, five hours a day. Hubbard also said you have to take a lot of niacin. That's right. What happens when you start taking that much niacin? <laughs> well, it de depends. I mean, when I, when I did it at 18, I accidentally took... 500 milligrams all at once and it made me pass out but i mean if you if you just take a little bit at a time and you build build your system up to it you know you could you could just you know take 50 milligrams and increase every day that's what the program says to do is you increase a little bit every day until you get all the way up to the high the the 3000 and and then you you stay on 3000 until you have no more reaction to it and yeah, our listeners should know you do a couple things on the pure it's not just niacin you have to take uh, there's like a vegetable oil, you have salt pills, lecithin, potassium, you're supposed to stay hydrated, drink calcium, magnesium, which is a powder you add to water. And there's a daily worksheet, Maureen, where you, you list cravings for types of food or drink. Yeah, well, your worksheet lists, uh, you know, what doses of every vitamin that you, you took that day, you know, what, what level of of doses you're at and then uh your your weight at the start how much did you run you know to get your circulation going how much time did you spend in the sauna how many breaks did you take um also things like that it's a detailed anything you that you went through mentally while you're sitting in the sauna as well any reactions that you had anything that you thought was sweating out or stuff that that was coming out of your your pores marine when how much time do you spend in the sun? Do you set an hour and read books and talk, and then do you go out and take a shower and run and come back in? Or what's a typical couple of days like in the sauna? Well, I mean, it, it could really vary. There's sort of a generalized, um, you know, statement in the purification rundown bulletin from what I recall that says, you know, that if you feel like you're, you know, you're overheated or getting too hot, you can get out and, and take a break. And um, of course, there were some people like me who are, you know, I'd lived in a desert for a while and I was like, I never actually felt overheated. I could just sit in there for the whole five hours and just drink water and sweat. And I was, I thought I was fine. You know, I wasn't, but I, I thought I was, but um, some people are, will take breaks every hour, you know, and um, go and uh, get in a cold shower maybe or uh, something like that. You know, I, I had a guy tell me a long time ago that when he did the PRF, he was oozing stuff from his pores and it was cough syrup, all the cough syrup he had taken as a child. And then we saw pictures of the of the Tom Cruise sponsored purification rundown following 9-11 mm -hmm. where firefighters were supposedly oozing purple slime from their skin and wiping it off with towels. And there's some video on the internet of this. Did you ever see anyone oozing any kind of colors from their skin? No, I didn't see anybody oozing any colors. Now, I... I had some stuff come out of my pores, like I had been sprayed with a skunk and, you know, for some reason, I guess that had been locked in my pores and that came out. But I don't see that as, I don't think that particularly was lodged in the fatty tissues because it had been a recent thing. Did they tell you you would be able to go on to do better auditing after you did the Pura? Or why did they tell you needed to do it? Well, the, the whole idea behind it, which I, which I think got kind of a bit you know, fanatic was the clear body, clear mind idea that if your body is free of toxins, then you, your mind will be more able to deal with auditing and getting in touch with your, you know, whatever um, past fears or whatever you you try to deal with in your in your processing and your counseling. Yeah, there was a there was a lot of a lot of hype about the program. I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't know why there isn't any sort of actual real scientific study. Does radiation or drugs actually really lodge in your tissues and in sitting in the sauna for five hours a day for over a month actually really beneficial? Marina, I'm glad you said that because 
The Church of Scientology has all the money in the world to fund a clinical study. However, because this is pseudoscience, the church with its one point, but that's actually it's billions of dollars, will not fund a clinical study. The refusal to fund a clinical study shows a couple things. They don't want to be caught up legally with actual hard data the public could look at, especially when it comes to niacin toxicity. Did you experience any kind of odd phenomena in your any of the peer-ups you've done? Do you have any visions or religious experiences, or did you feel like you were blowing charge, or did you have anything that Scientology claims you can get from that? That's a good question. First time I did the purification run now, when I was much healthier and it was a much happier experience, um, I I did feel that I had blown some charge I had on watching TV when I was a kid, you know, because I had, uh, I guess I was sitting in the sauna and I just was having all these like cartoons go through my head. And I, I may have just been bored, but I don't know, in my mind, I had visioned that I had blown some charge in watching TV. And then I had some, a little bit of like anxiety, probably because my, I mean, my heart was in much better shape then, but I think the program did sort of strain me a little bit and I had a little bit of a heart race on the very last uh, day I was there and I thought maybe I was blowing through some sort of anxiety and I was happy that that was gone, you know, but I don't, I mean, a lot of these gains, I, I didn't really have, um, I wasn't really able to evaluate them in comparison to other things because I was in an isolated environment. I mean, I didn't have the ability to go out and talk to someone and say, hey, I have these things happen to me on the Purif and I, you know, I think that they're probably just wonderful and amazing and the Purif is miraculous and, you know, I didn't have someone to go say, well, shoot, I thought about cartoons while I was sitting in the Purif too. It doesn't mean you ran out radiation, you know, <laughs> 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 yeah. right? And, yeah. and, you know, and then my second Purif, I, I, that was so confusing because I had so many health problems. I mean, I had developed an, I had developed some food allergies that I didn't know I had. And when I, when I went into the Purif without knowing ahead of time what my food allergies were, I mean, that was scary because I, I had a very bad reaction to the soy oil. Like the, there was this all blend oil I was supposed to take. I was taking large amounts of it and I didn't know it, but I had to developed an allergy to soy and I had broken out into red like hive like sores from my feet all the way up to my knees and they and I was say, sitting in the sauna trying to get them to sweat out and go away thinking oh well, this is some toxin coming out and the, the sores kept getting higher and they started bleeding because I was scratching them and stuff and I was like wait a minute this isn't th what if this isn't something that's sweating out maybe this is something I need to do something about and I did I I I was able to get, um, again, I was actually, I had a, a, um, the medical liaison officer help me with that. And she did, a, um, I paid for it, but she, we did a food allergy test. I think I paid like 300 bucks for it and then see her pay. That was really hard to do. And um, I found out I was allergic to soy. Again, what we were saying earlier is the Church of Scientology doesn't do any medical pre-screening. In other words, they don't have any doctors who work for the Church of Scientology who say, let's do, you know, a full physical checkup before you begin the Purif. Well, I mean, I was screened by by Dr. Dink. Like, okay, you can do the Purif. I, I mean, he did, he did this really cursory examination of me. You know, did he do an EKG? No. Did he do blood tests? Nope. Did, <laughs> did he check your, did he listen to your heart with a stethoscope? Yeah, he did do that. And blood pressure? Yeah, he did my blood pressure. So it's a very, I mean, it's a very cursory look without doing blood work. Actually, I and, think he did do some blood work, but it yeah. wasn't, I think you need a little bit more extensive uh, blood work for that program because of, like I said, there's the potential for allergies. And there's also um, to see if you already have any nutritional deficiencies because the program isn't going to cure why you have a deficiency. They, they would have never, I mean, I found out the hard way that I had parasites because I mean something bad happened to me in the middle of the program and I found out I wasn't able to absorb the nutrients that I was taking and you can't do an, uh, a strenuous program like that and not be able to absorb the extra vitamins and minerals you need to to to, to stay on the program. Maureen if you if the purification is about five hours a day of exercise and sauna how, how many days are you in it for a month, two months? How long does the Purif last? The, well, the 
the Bolton says you stay in there until you're done having any sort of reaction at all. Like you have to get rid of any sort of, you have to be able to be in the sauna with no reaction to the niacin or anything. And that's, I don't know. I mean, in my case, that was impossible, but there's, that's, that's part of what makes the program so uh, fanatic and potentially dangerous is there's this religious belief that you, you, it's a process that that you start and you finish and the end phenomena is you no longer are having any bad reactions um, from the niacin or... So you're saying that the end phenomena of the purification rundown would be ability to tolerate 5,000 milligrams of niacin a day comfortably. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Maureen, what effects did you develop after taking all that niacin? Well, after uh, being on 5,000 milligrams of niacin continuously, I mean, I... I was always having a reaction to it. I'd always flush, you know, get a flush reaction to it. And um, the idea is that you're supposed to continue on the program until you no longer have that flush reaction. Like you can actually take all of these vitamins and minerals and oil and niacin and you can sit in the sauna and, and sweat and you don't, you're not sweating anything out. You're not having any sort of change in your your mental state of mind you're you're just sitting comfortably in the sauna and there's nothing like running out you know quote unquote nothing running out of your system anymore and then you're done with the pure then you've had a win there you go now i'm reading uh, a church of scientology document probably after a lot of complaints and problems the church is saying idea that you have to take 5,000 milligrams of niacin and tolerate it, it was a misinterpretation and there's no HCLB to that effect, mm -hmm. which sounds like backpedaling here. And here's what the church says, quote, the end phenomena is reached when the individual is free of the restimulative presence of residuals of past drugs and other toxic substances. He will no longer be feeling the effects of these impurities going into restimulation, and there is a marked resurgence of overall spiritual well-being. End quote. The idea that you're free of the uh, restimulative presence of past drugs, mm -hmm. how would you even know that unless you did blood work? To, you know, I mean, first of all, in terms of pure science, the whole idea that things are stored in the fat of the body, th th that has never been scientifically proven in the way that Hubbard stated it. Right. Because your body's built to purify itself. That's why you have, you know, liver, kidneys. It's not built to store toxins. So what you were saying earlier, are there any studies? No, because the church doesn't want studies or they could easily fund them. Having said that, you're going in there with the religious belief that you have to be free of, you know, restimulation from past drugs and toxic substances. Mm -hmm. Do you have to write a success story that I feel free? Yeah, or you do have to, 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 to finish the program, you have to, to express your gratitude that the program helped you and helped you get rid of the, you know, you you got rid of some toxins and you got rid of any restimulation, you know, connected to those toxins. And um, at the time, you know, when I when I was on that PURF and I was sweating all this ammonia and I thought, well, I guess I handled some problems I had with ammonia. I thought maybe it was from like, you know, all the cleaning that I had done. And, you know, and I was like, <laughs> there's no way that much of ammonia could have lodged in my system. But I, you know, I, I thought that I was sweating out ammonia. And to, that's why I wanted to write a letter, you know, back to my letter as I thought the program could be dangerous because there's a certain amount of subjective interpretation that goes on. And if there isn't someone who is actually trained in, in the um, what can happen to someone when they're overstrained on a program, you need to know that, okay, if you're sweating out ammonia and you're feeling high anxiety and your heart is racing, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're getting rid of a toxin and you're overcoming your 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 mental reaction to that toxin. It, it could mean that you're, you know, injuring yourself. There was one day when I had a temperature. I had a temperature of 102 degrees. I was sick and I was still told to go back in the sauna. Really? Yes. With 102 temperature? Yeah. And I had just the most unbelievable headache and, you know, and the idea was that I was told that if you go in there, you know, and you're, it's because you're running something out. That's why you're sick. You have to go back in there. And uh, it was horrible. I like threw up and on my own determinism, I would not have stayed in that sauna. I would have said, I'm sick that day. I'm not coming in. But there were other people, the purification run down in charge. There are other people administering this program, interpreting Hubbard's writings for you as well. 
and they're going to tell you, oh, you, that sickness, that's because you're running something out. You need to stay on the program. You need to stay with it. Don't run from it. Don't rabbit from it. That's your case. You need to blow through it. The way out is the way through. I mean, I got all that motivational crap. And, you know, it was harmful to me. I was... I wasn't getting motivated to improve my life or improve myself mentally. They were actually literally motivating me to injure myself in there. Well, certainly. And th the purification rundown is, you know, a modern form of bloodletting. Then some people would experience uh, su a subjective sense, I feel better after bloodletting. That's why doctors did it. They believed they were draining the body of toxins, of bad blood, yeah. bad humors. Yeah. This kind of quackery is unsupported by any science. So the fact that they make you stay in the Purif with racing heartbeat, 102 degree fever, and they're telling you the spiritual interpretation of this uh, is shocking. And I was having dramatic weight loss. And I'm a thin person. I'm a thin, lean person. It wasn't like I was melting, shedding pounds of fat. So don't anybody get an idea that this is some wonderful weight loss program because it isn't. <laughs> you don't want to lose muscle mass. I didn't want to lose my lean muscle mass. In fact, when I got done with the program and I went back to post, I actually was more prone to injuries after that because I needed that 20 pounds of muscle mass. I needed it to carry my video camera and my tripod around. And it wasn't there for me anymore. And I, and I, and I had some more injuries and stuff like that. No, I can imagine. Go, going back to what you said earlier, in the church right up here I'm looking at, it says case supervisor report, there have been a few cases who rabbited, you know, who ran away from the Pura. Mm -hmm. Now, I imagine it could be so miserable you would rabbit or blow. Right. But is the, is the Pura in charge person there to make sure you don't run away? I mean, to some degree, yeah, they're supposed to encourage you. I mean, there wasn't any, I, there wasn't any physical pushing or anything like that. You know, I, I could have, you know, screamed and yelled and said no, but I mean, I would have been probably sent to ethics for it if I did. So no, that's an important point. So if you object to the uh, brutality of the purification run out, you could be sent to ethics as a as a problem. Right. It's like Maureen does not want to stay locked in a sauna for five hours a day with a 102 degree fever. Handle her with ethics. <laughs> right. Well, you have to also realize that I was still, uh, you know, I was still kind of a believer then. I was starting to have some doubts at that point, but I was still thinking, well, this is a good program and I don't know why I'm having the problem. It's something to do with something's wrong with me. And I, you know, and I went and I looked through the bulletin to find some sort of loophole to get off the program so that I wouldn't be outright refusing to do it because I didn't want to make waves you know I just said hey I think I you know I'm I'm overrun you know I've, I've picked a point where maybe I had a win but I really wanted to get out of there I wanted to get off the program because I just thought I you know I'm gonna friggin die in here so I I made up a win to get out of there and yeah it made me a liar and I felt bad I felt like why is this program that I really believed in um, actually turning me into a, a liar? <laughs> well, because you, in order to survive, you you're you have a body sense. You need to get the hell out of that sauna and the niacin craziness. Yeah, and also, and to some degree, I was even still sitting there, even doubting that that survival instinct. And I'm thinking, maybe I'm I'm rabbiting this program. Maybe I'm running, but it was like I. You know, there was too much pain, it, actual physical pain, telling me, no, I need to get out, off of that sauna. It can be argued, too, that the purification rundown is a form of Scientology indoctrination. That is, if they convince you to sit in a sauna for a long time and sweat and take niacin, they can convince you to do other things. And then t and make you think Halbert is a genius because you had this wonderful experience in the sauna. But, I mean, you could... You could just go to a gym and sit in a sauna, take some vitamins and go sit in a sauna and gym and, and feel kind of all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. You don't, you don't need to get so fanatic about it, you know? To your point, if you want to go on a, you know, a 30-day workout program where you do a little bit of sauna and running, anyone will feel better right. just from the exercise. So in and of itself, there's nothing miraculous. Of, you know, saunas have been around, I don't know, a thousand right. years at yeah. least in one form or another, wet and dry saunas. So there's nothing miraculous about the sauna. Now, you had some long-term health effects from the 1995, pur the second purification rundown? Yes, I did. What were your long-term health problems? Well, my long-term health problems were that my, my um, at-rest heart rate um, went up and stayed up. 
uh, which caused me to be um, tired all the time, more so than before I started the program. Continue to have heart palpitations and chest pains um, for months after that. For months after completing the purification rundown? Yes, uh, maybe even a whole year after that. And you're in the Sea Org having to work long hours. Yes. So as a result of what happened to me on my second purification rundown, I decided to write a letter to Dr. Jean Dink, who had been, Dr. Jean Dink had, was LRH's um, friend and doctor, and he had, I guess, contributed to the development of the purification rundown. He was, he was acknowledged in one of the bulletins I'd read. And so I wrote him a letter, and I also copied the Senior CS International Office, and they're responsible for the technology, managing the technology all over the world. And I, and basically the gist of my letter was that, you know, I'd learned, you know, I had a difficult time on the purification rundown and what had happened. And I had learned some things um, recently from uh, a personal trainer and a, and a trained physical therapist about the importance of monitoring your heart rate on any physically strenuous activity. And you, what you do is you, you take your, your weight and your, your height and everything, and you, you figure out a target heart rate uh, for any sort of workout activity and you monitor your heart rate and you make sure that you don't stay at your target heart rate for too long because if you stay at your target heart rate for too long your body will go into uh, fight or flight mode and will start metabolizing its own muscle mass and that's actually a, a technical thing that that personal trainers and, and physical therapists all know because their goal is to help a person become more healthy to build muscle to retain that muscle. And you don't want to exercise so much that you're defeating that purpose and breaking down muscle. And there's also Correct. a more serious consequence, very rare, but it, it does happen, where you can actually overtrain to such a degree that your, your, your body is metabolizing your muscle and some of that muscle tissue can get into your bloodstream get into your and cause a uh, kidney failure and you don't want that people could die from that so you have to really be careful when you're doing anything really strenuous to actually monitor your heart rate it's a basic and so i had written dr dank i had written senior sis on office and i said that you should have people who go in the on the purification rundown they should have heart rate monitors they should be given a target heart rate and the purification rundown i see should be trained to learn you know the symptoms of overtraining so that people don't injure themselves as I had and mistake this ammonia smell as running out a toxin. Because when you, if you start stinking like ammonia, the idea is that you don't want to stink like ammonia. You don't want to keep going and doing the same thing and smelling more and more like ammonia because that means you're metabolizing a lot of protein. It's not now, what was, the, what was the response to the letter you wrote? The response that I got was actually really heartbreaking. Um, it basically said, um, one, Dr. Dink, the senior CS int office um, replied to me. They said, one, uh, for one, Dr. Dink uh, did not um, write the purification rundown. He only aided LRH in his research, so he doesn't have any authority to change or alter the program. Two, they were not going to change or alter the purification rundown because L. Ron Hubbard wrote it. It was part of sign, the Scientology religion. It was part of keeping Scientology working to keep it the same as L. Ron Hubbard had written it. And they certainly weren't going to change it or add anything to it because of what a, a WOG personal trainer or physical therapist told me. Oh, that is just shocking. Uh, so input from WOGs are worthless against the religious technology. Right. Now, I want to interject, Maureen. In the uh, purification uh, rundown, in the rooms they, that they, the different facilities they use for them, mm -hmm. there's nothing like uh, a set of paddles. You know, where where if someone has a heart attack, th they, there's no life saving equipment, no oxygen bottles. There's nothing no, there. No, and the purification rundown I see doesn't need to be chained in, in CPR. So, you know that. Wait, wait, no, no, that's something so vital. The purification rundown I see, the in-charge person, doesn't have to have a certificate in CPR, life-saving, or anything else. Right. There, there's no red So how can you put people through this with no basic Red Cross training in life-saving? I think it's insane. I mean, sitting in a sauna that's, what, 104 degrees or higher, it, it, it's going to make... That's a workout for you. It's like your every system in your body is working out. Your heart is beating faster. Um, there's a tremendous amount of liquids going through your system. It's not, I mean, it's, 
it's straining on, on anybody. And, you know, there needs to be someone who understands, uh, you know, medical stuff <laughs> there. Well, maybe the program should not exist at all until, you know, actual medical studies have been conducted. Because I, I personally think it's a dangerous program. Uh, because it's medically unsupervised. It's not, it hasn't been demonstrated medically to have any effects. And until such a time as it has scientific underpinning, why would anyone do it? It's especially the controversial uh, of the niacin overdose. Yeah, I would tend and, to agree with you on that. I mean, I when I did my purification rundown in, in 1995 and I was having all those troubles, I actually did have, uh, you know, a medical liaison officer to help get me to the heart specialist and help me with sorting out my allergies and stuff like that. But most purification rundowns do not have that. You don't you don't have someone that's gonna gonna you know take you to the doctor if your heart's racing they're going to just tell you to stay in the sauna well yeah and that makes uh, a bad situation worse mm -hmm. and if somebody marine if somebody came to you today and said should i do the scientology purification rundown what would you tell them i would say i would say no i would say if you if you want to do if you want to use sauna and vitamins to to sweat out some toxins and read the program and do it your on your own and go to a gym and and only sit in the sauna for like an hour or so and monitor your heart rate and have someone there with you like who can make sure you're doing okay but i wouldn't get involved i wouldn't mix religion with it i wouldn't take that fanaticism that is involved in doing the program and add that to it because that's what makes it dangerous when someone believes that they're they have to you know the way out's the way through and they have to blow through whatever turns on in that sauna and 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 they overlook actual health uh situations i, I don't think that's right based on the response that i got to my letter i know that there isn't any science because if science was involved then they would have all the latest technology regarding saunas and heart racing and diet and vitamins and nutrition and they would know that you know your body can only utilize so much of the vitamins that it takes and then it discards the rest and high doses of nice and can be dangerous and there's just a lot of information available now that wasn't available when it first was developed and so if it was scientifically based then they would change the program it would be a living program it would get changed and that's another part of my you know my journey you know out of scientology was discovering that scientology was no longer a living changing religion i mean when i originally got involved in the late 70s when i was a teenager and early 80s elrin hubbard was still alive and i actually did get to actually communicate with Hubbard when he was alive. I sent him dispatches from my um, post as a messenger for him at the Hemet base and he actually wrote policies based on what I wrote to him. So there was, a, there was an idea in my mind that it was a living changing religion that I was a member, that it was my religion, I was part of it and then I could create changes. I could write to L. Ron Hubbard and tell him something and then have a policy letter an executive directive come out, or actually they were called advices then, and they were adopted as executive directives later, but this executive directive co could come out, you know, based on something that I had reported to Elrin Hubbard. And, and it really, it made me feel part of the religion. And it just, I guess Hubbard passed away and it took a while for it to sink in, but that religion it, is a dying religion. It doesn't change, you can't change it by communicating to the management. Um, in the same way that it could be changed uh, when Elrin Hubbard was alive. Marin, that's very significant what you're saying for a number of reasons. One, the fact that once Hubbard died, the religion became, becomes locked in stone. So Dr. Eugene Dank, who helped Ron design the purification rundown, mm -hmm. no longer had any input once Ron died. And by the way, Dr. Dank was the one who prescribed visceral for L. Ron Hubbard in his last days of life. So he was a very, he was influential. He was Aaron Hubbard's personal physician for two years. Right. So the fact Dank, a medical doctor, has no more input. Nobody has any more input. It's locked. Purification rundown is locked in you know some 
sort of 1970s notions of nutrition and toxins that have since proven to be largely invalid. Yeah, and Dink's name was used he, on that program. He, he was, like, mentioned to give it some credibility. And I thought that, you know, Dink was still alive in 2002. I wrote him, and I said, you know, you need to fix this. You're a doctor. Your name's on that program. You need to change it, and you should be able to. And, uh, you know, I didn't – Dr. Dink didn't even write me back. No, and I think if he would have, he would have been slammed because that – at that point, to he would have been offering verbal tech or squirreling, right? I guess. I don't know. So I mean, it, I don't really know what his actual involvement was. I mean, I've heard so many things from old timers that Hubbard actually did listen to people when he was developing the religion. And some of the stuff that is helpful, you know, was just luck, you know, or it was some suggestion from someone else and LRH put his name on it. So um, who, who knows? Yeah, who knows, right? Marine, one of the reasons for the purification rundown is the church views it as an alternative to uh, psychiatry. It views it as an alternative to WOG medicine. Mm -hmm. In other words, the church has this view that you shouldn't shove pills down people's throats. <laughs> well, high doses of vitamins is the difference, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No, they have this idea that you don't take a pill for everything. Well, what I'm saying is there's two different things. Yeah. Is there the overprescribing of medicines? Yeah, that's an actual debate you can get into. Are things overprescribed? Yes. Yeah. But nevertheless, for many people, they need to take those pills to save their life, to stay healthy, to fend off conditions that would otherwise get worse. Right. Uh, Tori Crispin tells the story how she was taken off epilepsy medication and she had a grandma seizure. Why? Because some genius in the Church of Scientology decided to get case gain as an OT. She needed to go off her epilepsy medication. Right. Now, that's insane. The Church of Scientology loves to get a new person in and take all the drugs out, you know, away from them. Turn them over, turn them over, turn over all the pills. Right. Go off all your drugs. Well, that's, that's medically unsound, and it's stupid, and it's dangerous. If someone wants to do alternative health therapy uh, drug-free, there are much safer and better alternatives in the all alternative health field than, than doing a, a program like a fanatic religious program that doesn't, you know, that isn't going to change for your special needs. No, because the pure, no, you said, well, the purification rundown is a one-size-fits-all solution to toxins in the body and to the spiritual restimulation that occurs as a result. Okay. So the whole model or construct of the purification rundown only serves the purposes of Scientology. And after you do the purification rundown, you're supposed to get better case gain and auditing, correct? Correct. Now, after the purification rundown, did you get auditing? I did. But I had to do and, another program first. <laughs> I was I had to see a doctor. Uh, I was seeing an osteopath. I had developed um, insomnia. I couldn't sleep. And part of getting auditing is you have to be able to sleep. So um, I had to do a whole diet and um, special routine. I actually did homeopathic remedies as well to get to handle my insomnia. And it took me about a month maybe a little less than a month to get to where I could sleep again. And and then I did get some auditing after that. I'd like to have you back on the show to talk about your, you know, your larger story, especially how you're, you're trying to get your sister out of the church. Right. My sister is still a Scientologist. She still really believes she still really has hope. And, you know, I, I was there once. I mean, I don't, it's, it's really heartbreaking. It's difficult to acknowledge that maybe Hubbard made some mistakes, but I'm, I'm trying not to just sort of slam everything that, that she believes in or that Scientologists believe in. I'm just saying that, you know, yeah, some things in Scientology can be very, very helpful, but it really needs to be put in perspective and it really needs to be compared to what other things are out there. And, um, and also the dangers and the, the abuses within uh, Scientology Incorporated need to be faced. They need to be confronted because they, they're getting swept under the carpet and they're just getting labeled. Like I'm labeled an, a quote unquote anti-Scientologist or a chaos merchant or a suppressive person because I'm being a whistleblower about the abuses and the things that, that went wrong in my experience. I'm not trying to like destroy people's rights to practice their religion or, or have gains or anything like that. I'm just saying like, if it could happen to me, it could happen to you. And it's probably going to happen to you at some point. 
I, I just don't want to be sitting here and going, you know what, I told you so. And part of being a CIRG member is that we were supposed to, you know, we were taught that if there was a rag headed towards the bilge, that it was your responsibility to do something about it. It didn't matter what your job was. If you saw something that was going to make the ship sink, then you had to grab it. And so when I speak out about abuses or, or you know, some of the dangerous, potential dangers of the purification rundown, I'm, I'm talking to... Uh, you know, I'm talking to somebody that I care about, to another human being who whose life could be harmed possibly if they don't know this information. I that's something that I would tell my own sister if I could, if my sister was willing to talk to me. Yeah, if she didn't think that I was an evil, a suppressive person who would um, cause her to to be a a potential trouble source, and and she was willing to speak to me, I'd tell her, you know, everything that I went through and all the things that I'd learned, and that's exactly what I'm, I'm doing here is I'm telling everybody because I, you know, I care. I, I'm so glad you care enough to speak out about the purification rundown of Scientology in general. I remember the first time we met was at the Steve Allen Center for Media Inquiry here in Hollywood where you participated in the press conference. And I thought you were so brave to publicly speak through your pain and grief. Oh, thank you. And I think you continue to be very brave, and we very much appreciate having you on the show. We look forward to having you back. For Surviving Scientology Radio, this is your host, Jeffrey Augustine, and as always, we'll be in very good touch. Thank you for listening.